And ta-da! There it is. Our map of consciousness, our treasure map, our roadmap to happiness and success. And of course, you're going to be asking yourself in no time, well, if this really is some kind of map, what's my location on it? Where am I here? <laughs> and that's really an excellent question, because if these vibrations or frequencies or emotional states, energy states, are really so strictly correlated with my happiness, and actually, as we will see later, it is not just correlation, it's actually a causation, but even more so. Where am I here? Because, as you will notice, you shift constantly. Right now, maybe, I hope, <laughs> you're somewhere here, on the level of optimism, forgiveness, acceptance, willingness. But tomorrow, maybe you will be angry, for some reason, or afraid, or ashamed. And then, when you go with your family on a holiday, you will jump to love and joy. Okay? So, not only that we shift constantly, it's quite common, actually, for people to spend one part of their life in one area of the map, and another part of their life in quite another. <laughs> for example, maybe at home you are a loving wife and mother, and friend, and neighbor, and you're always full of understanding and forgiveness, and you're helping people around you, and people like you. But when you go to your workplace, to your office, you may be encouraged to spend most of your time on the level of desire, greed, because there's never enough money, there are never enough clients, you should always go for more, there is an unsatiable desire for more. Shareholders want more, owner wants more, and so on and so on. Or, if you are in some kind of management position, maybe you will be encouraged to spend a lot of your time on the level of pride. Because, as the legend goes, people on the level of pride somehow project confidence and that's very good for business. Actually, it's not. <laughs> Do you understand the difference between doing business, for example, presentation, uh, from the level of pride and from the level of, let's say, willingness and acceptance? Okay, so from the level of pride, it's all about me. I am the best. I have the best product. Whatever you need, I will help you. And there, are, there, are, there is no competition to us, because no one else can do what I can. I'm the best. This is about you. So, first question from this level is, how can I help you? It's all about your needs. And sure, I have some experience and I have some products that may help you, but if someone else is better suited for your needs, please consult them. Because it's about you, it's not about me. Okay? So, that's a huge difference. Okay. So, you shift constantly. You shift constantly. And actually, if you take a closer look, you will notice that these are not exactly discrete states. I mean, you know that from your own experience. There are levels of anger. There are levels of fear. But also, there are levels of acceptance and willingness and love and joy and so on. So, in between any of these two states, there are, well, more than 50 shades of grey. <laughs> Actually, there is an infinite number of shades of grey or any other color that you prefer. So, for example, between courage of 200 and neutrality of 250, there is courage of 201, 202, 203, and then 203.1, 203.2. There is an infinite number of levels in between any of these, well, states. They are not fixed, discrete states. Okay. And actually, you rarely experience pure states. Okay? So, a lot of people never ever experienced pure love without fear, or joy and pleasure without some guilt attached to it. Okay? And, for example, one day, Suddenly, unannounced, your old friend you haven't seen for 10 years suddenly comes to your doorstep. 
Ta-da! Surprise! Aren't you happy to see me? <laughs> well, yes, I am. I am in joy because I see you after 10 years and I'm really interested how your life is going and I'm sure you're equally interested in how my life is going and that's great. However, there is a bit of anger. I mean, you could have called. You could have announced yourself. You know, because right now my home is a little bit messy, so I'm a bit ashamed and also I may feel also a little bit guilty because right now I have no time for you. I need to go out in 20 minutes from my home and you feel guilty because you can't spend time with your old friend and also maybe you're blaming him. So guilt is about projecting guilt means blaming other people. So you're blaming your friend because he could have called. So there is joy and anger and guilt and shame all at once. All at once inside. So these states are more like, well, let's say primary colors or feeling tones. You know, primary colors, a rainbow, that beautiful arch on the sky, has seven colors. And these colors are called primary colors because you can get whatever color you can imagine, you can possibly imagine, just by mixing these seven colors in right amount, right ratio. Okay. Or these are just like a feeling tones and what you are feeling at any particular moment is more like a chord. <laughs> several notes at once, not necessarily all of them with the same intensity. Your friend comes unannounced, there is a lot of joy, some anger, tiny bit of guilt. Okay? So, of course, the idea is to get high, <laughs> to get as high as you get and as you may, and then spend as much time as you can, as high <laughs> as you can. But also, also this is very important, you should get rid of those lower emotions completely. So, having just a tiny grain of sand of guilt in your eye, you know, having a grain of sand in your eye, it hurts. And it can be quite an impediment for your vision. Or it's just like having a, a little stone in your shoe. It may be invisible and nobody will notice, probably. But try walking with a small stone in your shoe or even running. I mean, it hurts and it's going to be problematic. So, get rid of those, especially guilt and shame and spend as much time as you can as high as you can on this list okay but we guarantee you that no matter what your current vibration is you will perceive the world according to your current vibration it is just like that example we had in a previous video with uh, that homeless guy sitting on a bench. So that situation may be perceived on different, in many different ways and it is always according to your current vibratory state. So whatever your current vibratory state is, we, you will perceive world according to it. And, and this is really important, not only that you will perceive the world, you will react according to your vibratory state. Now, let's take a closer look at that word react. React means to act in the same way. Because the prefix re comes from Latin, means to do something again and again in completely the same way. So, for example, uh, you may need to maybe recalculate something. So, you calculated something, but now, for whatever reason, you need to do that again in exactly the same way. So, you will re 
calculate. You will recount the votes during elections, for example. So you already counted them, but now you need to recount them. You are going to do that thing all over again in exactly the same way. So reacting means acting in completely similar, identical way, you know, and it is always according to your current vibratory state. And that locks you in that vibration even further. Okay, so let me give you an example. For example, one morning you woke up, well, feeling pretty good, you had a decent breakfast, and then you sit in your car and you drive to work, for example. And it's a beautiful day, maybe you're even singing something, listening to a radio, and then suddenly, out of nowhere, someone comes from side road and cuts you off, almost hitting you. Maybe for a second you will be afraid, but once you realize that it, was, it is not a life-threatening situation anymore, you will probably jump to anger. Because that idiot! <laughs> you could have killed me! <laughs> now what are you going to do? You're going to react from the level of anger. Reacting from the level of anger me means to be angry. And it will probably pop to your mind. Now I will write down your license plate number and I will report you to the police because you need... you don't need your driving license, we have to take your driving license from you because you are a terrible driver and you're going to kill someone, you're a menace to the society. Okay, now you're angry and you're starting to drive angry. Does that make you better driver or worse? Of course, worse. So now you are going to cut people off and now you are going to yell at the traffic jams and you are going to spread that anger further. You know? Because when you cut because you're angry, now you will cut someone, now he will be angry. And you will stay in that vibration because you will cut him off, he will be angry, he will... Because the world is perceived as antagonistic. You know? and he's honking to you because he is somehow antagonistic to you. Okay. Then you come to your office and maybe your colleague will come and say, could you help me please finish that report? I'm not quite sure. Then, since you are still in the level of anger, you will perceive that question as antagonistic and you will react antagonistically and you will say, Finish it yourself. I helped you enough times. Why always I have to do everything? Blah, blah, blah. And of course, your colleague will <laughs> leave you. And he's not going to ask you to join him for lunch. Of course, because you're angry. You're not exactly a very good <laughs> company. <laughs> okay? And you will perceive that act of him not calling you to join him for lunch as antagonistic, right? And then later, maybe he will go to boss and give him that report and boss will say, well, this is not as good as I hoped. I mean, what's wrong? Why didn't we do that better? Well, you know, I did that as, bad, as good as... as I, I couldn't do it better. And I asked, well, you, for help, but he just brushed me off. He was so angry, he brushed me off. Now, does your boss think better of you or worse of you? Okay, he's not going to think any better of you because you didn't help a colleague and that report is not as good as it should be. So maybe tomorrow there will be some round of layoffs because times are tough and you will be on top of the list. And that will be another proof that the world is antagonistic. <laughs> okay. And so your not only perception, but your deeds, your reactions 
not just actions, they are reactions, are locking you in a state of anger. And of course it goes on and on. You will come home and you will snap at your kids because they left toys on the floor and then you will yell at your husband for whatever reason and he's going to say, why are you yelling at me? And you perceive that as a threat <laughs> because the world is antagonistic. Okay, it is exactly like the Buddha said. Holding on to anger is like drinking poison and expecting the other person to die. <laughs> now, take a look at this. Holding on to anger. You are holding on to anger. And you are drinking poison and expecting the other person to die. Because, let me tell you a secret. Natural anger lasts for about 15 seconds. Everything else, everything after those 15 seconds, it's just your mental complaining reinforcing itself. Okay. So, let me give you this example. Two ducks flying around and then land on the same place on a lake or pond. And they're quarreling. Why are you here? This is my place. And one flies away, the second flies away. And that's it. That's it. Do you really think that first duck or second duck, after half an hour or two hours, is still sitting somewhere on the lake thinking, that stupid duck? I mean, how dare she? <laughs> I mean, of course not. It's over. You just. You know, you, you let go. Don't hold on to anger. Okay? What you should do is show some understanding and forgiveness. Because that guy that cuts you off and almost hits you, you don't know what's in his life. You don't know what's in his head. Maybe he was dis distracted for some really good reason. Maybe he didn't sleep a minute last night because he was taking care of his sick kid. Okay. Maybe he's a firefighter. Maybe he spent all night saving people from a burning building. Or right now he received just some very bad news. Maybe his wife is in a hospital and he's rushing to see her. Okay. Can you have some understanding for his situation now? Okay. So, forgive him. You don't know what to do. Even if, he, if it's none of the kind, so there is no excuse for his behavior. You are holding on to anger. You are drinking poison and expecting him <laughs> to die. Just let it go. Forgive him. Do you know the secret of forgiveness? A lot of people tell me, well, I cannot forgive because, you know, that other person deserved it. And he hurt me or she hurt me or something. Okay, you are not forgiving other people because they deserve it. But because you deserve it. You don't want to spend any more time on that level of anger, for example. And the secret to forgiveness is this. Accept an honest apology that you never ever received. That's all there is to it. Accept an honest apology from that person that you never ever received. So imagine, for example, that one minute after that guy cuts you off, almost hitting you and so on, there is some traffic jam, you are waiting in your car and he's two cars in front of you, and then he gets out of his car, comes to you, tok, 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 knocks on your window, you roll the window down. I'm so sorry. I'm really, really sorry. I know I almost hit you, but you know, my mind was somewhere else because my wife is in a hospital and, and so on and so on. Now can you accept that apology? Okay? Just accept an apology that you never ever received. And that's it. Get out of that frequency of anger. Because, let me give you an alternative 
uh, variation of the story. So you were driving your car, pretty, feeling pretty good, someone cuts you off, angry, okay, you get angry for 15 seconds and then you accept an honest apology <laughs> that you never ever received, you let go. You are back in your original vibration that you started, maybe even better. And then you will come to your office and you will help your colleague and your boss will appreciate that. And that colleague will ask you to join him for lunch. And you will come home in loving and forgiving and trusting mood. And you are not going to yell at your kids. You are not going to yell at your husband. It is completely different chain of events. It is completely different chain of events. From that point in time, you can go this way, being angry. Or you can go this way, being understanding and forgiving. It's your choice. It is a choice. There is no justified resentment. You resent that guy because he got you. There is no justified. You choose your chain of events that's going to follow. Okay? By choosing your vibration. And you can call this alternate timeline or alternate reality or parallel reality or whatever you wish to call it. But it is a choice. It is your choice. Oh, the only prerequisite is that you notice that you are angry and you know that you are drinking poison and waiting for other people to die. And you just say, you know what, I'm not going to do that. And you let it go. Okay. It changes your life completely. How about fear? Let's talk about fear. Okay. Let's say that there are two cities or villages and they are relatively close to each other. So they cooperate, they share, they trade, they're they visit each other, people from these two cities or villages. And for years and years everything is fine. But then one day, someone from village A goes to visit someone to village B and notices that their crops, their fields, are not as good as they should be for, let's say, this time of year. Our crops are much, much better. And then he goes back to his home and then he uh, goes to mayor or chief of the village, his village, and says, you know, I noticed that in the village B, their crops are not as good. Mm. They are going to have problems this winter with food. You know, they are not going to have enough. And I am afraid, I am afraid that they are going to try to steal our food. Okay, now chief has a choice. He can act from understanding and forgiveness and trust and compassion, or he can act from the level of fear. Accept that vibration of fear that he was offered. And let's say he does that. He said, <clears throat> That's really a problem. Yeah, they're not going to have enough food. We need somehow to take care of our own. And we need to protect ourselves. Okay? So, we should build an army. We should build an army to protect our crops this winter. Now, there may be several months until that famous winter. <laughs> but never mind. We are in a state of fear now because of what might happen, that we are, actually what we are afraid may happen, okay. according to the information that's not exactly 100% reliable. I mean, their crops are maybe not as good as ours, but that doesn't mean that they are going, they are going hungry. They will go hungry this winter. Okay. So, okay, now we are afraid and we start building an army to protect our food. <laughs> okay. And of course, someone from village B will notice that. I mean, we can try to keep that a secret. 
but it won't be a secret very long. And now mayor of village B will say, hmm, those guys from village A are building an army and they are building weapons. What are they really planning? Maybe they are planning to attack us. Maybe we should protect ourselves. And then they start building army and weapons and walls and so on. And please notice that nothing actually happened so far. So someone noticed that crops from the village B are not as good <laughs> as they should be. Maybe he was wrong. And then he went to the chief and he acted from the level of fear. And by acting on the level of fear, by building an army, by creating weapons, you're pulling resources that should be invested somewhere else, for example, in the field or, or on the crops, by doing more agriculture, <laughs> They're pulling resources. And the other village is also pulling their resources and it's not going to help anyone. So that's one chain of events. But there is also another chain of events. Chief from village A receives information that their crops are not as good and he can go to the village B and say, look, we noticed that your crops are not as good as they should be, but don't worry. Don't worry. We'll have, probably we'll have enough and we'll share. And if not, we will help you in a hunt. Maybe we could uh, catch more fish. Or even, you know, there are, from this point, several months until winter, we can do a lot of different things in between. Somehow prepare for that situation, but even if shit hits the fan, <laughs> or when shit hits the fan, <laughs> you know, we will help you. We will help you. And now we can pull our resources together and maybe, maybe we can send you 20 guys to help you with your crops. You know, you're showing some compassion for the problem, some understanding. And this is, and this is really crucial. If you really think a little bit about it, Compassion is the ultimate survival tool. In our, our civilization is built on competition. And we think that the key to security is having a largest gun in the room. But it is not. You are safer when you are surrounded with friends than when you are surrounded with enemies but holding the biggest gun. Because that's going to change. Tomorrow someone else is going to build a better gun. Or you're just going to fall asleep and someone will kill you in your sleep. You are much, much safer when you show compassion. When you surround yourself with the friends, then by having the largest, you know, weapon, gun, army. In the <laughs> because waging wars doesn't solve anything. It is exactly putting your energy in the wrong vibration. War never solved anything because it's like a pendulum, you know. We are fighting over something. I am for and you are against. And the more I'm for, you are more against. And then I'm more for and you are more against. And it never ever ends. You know, um, First World War, World War I, uh, 1914 to 1918. Okay. Uh, at the time, it was labeled war to end all wars. And of course, now we know that it wasn't the war to end all wars. <laughs> because we had another world war 20 years later and hundreds of local regional wars ever since. There are, it is just, it doesn't solve anything. You cannot, we have a lot, a whole lot of wars today. We have war on terror. I mean, war on terror creates more terror. We have war on drugs. We, have, uh, we are fighting corruption, we are fighting injustice, we are fighting for equality, and so on. There are so many fights. And you know what George Carlin, one of the greatest comedians, said about that? 
Fighting for peace is like screwing for virginity. <laughs> it's exactly that. You cannot fight for peace. You cannot fight corruption. When you fight corruption, you have more corruption. You cannot wage war on drugs. I mean, we have war on drugs for years. Are we winning that war? Do we have less drugs? No. Don't fight what you don't prefer. Just invest your energy in what you do prefer. So don't fight the cause of the problem. For example, in on war on drugs, it will be putting people in jail for selling or using drugs. Support the solution. You know, that's exactly what Portugal, European country, did. They decriminalized all drugs, I mean, for personal use. And then that money that was left because police now doesn't have to waste resources on fighting the drug users and less people in jail and so on. And, so on. and that money they invested in people who have trouble with drugs. Because, you know, people who are using drugs are trying to run away from something, from some kind of pain, or maybe they feel their life is worthless or whatever. Help them. Help them. Don't fight the cause. And it really works. In the case of Portugal, yes, it really works. You should take a look at that if you're interested in that idea. So, as Muji, one of the great spiritual teachers, contemporary, said, don't remind the world that it is sick and troubled. Remind it that it is beautiful and free. And when Muji says, don't remind the world, it doesn't mean just go around and tell people, oh no, the world is beautiful and free, hey, the world is beautiful and free. <laughs> remind the world that it is beautiful and free with your actions and with your vibration. So, invest your energy in something that you would like. Don't fight what you don't like. As the Gandhi beautifully said, be the change that you wish to see in the world. Be the change that you wish to see in the world. Don't fight for a change that you wish to see huh? or against something. Be the change. If you would like world peace, be in peace and don't go to any wars. And if you, are, if you meet some misunderstanding or if you have different points of view with someone, if there's some kind of argument about something, show some understanding and forgiveness. Show some understanding. That will solve all your problems. That's, that's a path to the solution. And, you know, there was a great spiritual teacher, teacher about 2000 years ago. His name was Yeshua, full name Yeshua ben Yosef, uh, commonly known here as Jesus Christ. He said, love your enemy. Turn other cheek. If someone hits, hits you, turn the other cheek. I mean, that doesn't make sense at all in the Newtonian physics, in the uh, cause and effect and action-reaction kind of world. But it makes a lot of sense. When you look at things energetically, vibrate from a vibratory perspective, when you, you're discovering secrets of the universe by examining frequency, energy and vibration, as Tesla suggested. It makes all the difference in the world. Investing your energy in what you do prefer, instead of fighting what you don't prefer. Otherwise, you're just reacting and you're locking yourself in vibration that you do not prefer and you do the same thing all over again. And exactly just like Einstein said, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, but expecting different results. Our brain filters reality according to our vibratory state. So we perceive circumstances around us according to our current vibration. And then we react 
from that same vibration, doing the same thing all over again. And if you expect a different result, well, that's insanity. But treachery of the mind runs even deeper than that. Because, you know, according to research that did two guys in 1981, Gray and La Violette, they discovered on a huge sample of people that, and I'm going to quote this because it is extremely important, thoughts are filed in the memory bank according to the various shades of feelings associated with those thoughts. Thoughts are filed in a memory bank according to shape feelings. Let's keep it simple. Or vibratory state or frequency level or whatever you wish to call it. So, meaning this. When you are angry, you suddenly have access to thoughts and memories associated with anger. That gives you even more reason to be right, quote unquote. Because suddenly you remember the last time when you were angry and the time before that and before that. And you are storing this situation now in your mind, in your memory bank, as they call it, in the you know, shelf that's written anger. And that locks you in a state even further. So not only that you perceive the world as antagonistic when you are in anger, and then you react from anger, making other people angry, and then they are angry, and they are locking you in the antagonistic mode. But you have thoughts and memories, actual memories, of only of those situations when you were angry. And that locks you in anger even further. You know, if you want to perceive a different version of reality, so now you are perceiving the world as antagonistic and you would prefer to see it as hopeful or harmonious. Or you need to change your vibration first. How? By choosing. Choosing how to respond, not react, respond to circumstances. Choosing how to respond to circumstances. It's about consciously choosing how to respond to circumstances. Let me give you an example. I know it sounds maybe abstract, but it's quite simple actually. Let's say you failed at something. For example, let's say it is in a business environment. So there is a huge meeting, everyone is invited, and you already know what the topic is. Boss is not very happy because the sales in this quarter are disastrous. And it's tragedy. And now there is a huge meeting that we are going to discuss what to do with those abysmal sales results, business results. Okay, so your boss comes to meeting and says, you know, guys, we have terrible results. What are we going to do about it? If you are in a level of shame, you will just, you know, hope that no one will ask you anything. And you will not um, even try to come up with a solution. If you feel guilty about it, either you're going to just like shame, hope, no one, or you will try to shift blame and you will say, it's not my fault or it's not my department's fault, it's their fault. We did our job, but marketing <laughs> failed. It's not about product, it's not about sales, it was marketing's fault. Okay. If you're in a level of apathy, you're going to think, well, it's nothing to be done, you know, crisis, people have no, no one has interest for our product. There's nothing to do here, and so on and so on. If you are in a level of anger, you say, yeah, people are stupid and uh, they don't understand our product and then, you know, you're some, trying somehow to uh, express your anger or you're going to, which, which is even worse, repress it and, you know, be angry inside and 
not showing it outside. And this is a choice. This is a choice. You might as well say, well, that's really interesting. So people are not buying our product anymore. Why? That's really interesting to consider because, and it's really, this is really interesting, success is a lousy teacher. Right? Let's say that I am a producer of this pen. So what I do, I make pens in different colors for whiteboard. Okay. And we produce the pens and we sell them. And it's going great. As much as we can produce, people are buying, we are getting money, everyone's happy. Did I learn anything about this pen? or my customers, or their needs. No. I'm just making pens and collecting money, and that's it. But if people are not buying my pens, well now, I will think about it. What's wrong? Is it too heavy? Maybe it's, it should be smaller. Maybe we should put magnet on the side, so it sticks to the white. Now I am learning something. You know, uh, what kind of pens are people buying? Uh, what's the difference? Do I need to make our pen cheaper? Do we need to make them more reliable, more durable? Now we are learning. about. It all starts with a choice. So, the beginning of this story was always the same. We have terrible results selling these pens. What are we going to do? From here, we are not going to do anything. <laughs> we are just going to shift blame or we are going to hope that somehow floor will open and that will disappear and we will hope that we will be invisible and no one will ask us anything. From here, you know, there is some energy involved, but uh, it is about us. How are we going to solve problems? Maybe from the level of, for example, pride, uh, you know, we should make exclusive agreement with some huge distributor because our pens are better, and, but uh, people don't know that. And we're just going to make them more available by eliminating the competition from the shelves <laughs> in the shops and, and so on and so on. It just doesn't help. You can choose, you can choose, consciously choose to show some understanding and forgiveness and optimism. Forgiveness in this case means to forgive yourself. Because what happened, abysmal sales result, it's a great thing. It, now we will, some, we will learn something new for, for our product. Uh, about our customers or whatever. Because, as Albert Einstein brilliantly said, no problem can be solved from the same level of consciousness that created it. And that goes for any situation, any problem. How about environmental pollution? Where is that problem created? Which level of consciousness created the problem with pollution? Well, first of all, desire. Because it is cheaper to build a factory that pollutes than to build a factory that doesn't. Okay. But also fear. Because if our product is not cheap enough, then we are going to go out of business and we are going to starve. But also pride. Because we don't need nature. Who cares? And maybe one day that pollution problem will really be a problem and then we'll solve it somehow because we are smarter than that. We'll do that. Okay. But if you really want to address the problem with the pollution, you should be here. You should take a look and see what are the forces that are creating that problem. And then you will be able to solve it. Not by fighting the cause. You know, we are going to uh, close those factories that pollute. I mean, that can work in a short run. But it's not really a solution. The solution is to choose 
to respond, respond, not react, choose to respond to that situation from higher level of consciousness. Okay. It's all about choice. It's taking personal responsibility about your choices because you know that your happiness and your success depends on your level of consciousness. You know, because success is about being creative, right? Today, more than ever, success comes from being innovative and creative, not about working more. Okay? Even if you need to create more of something, it should involve some kind of creativity and not just time spent in your workplace. Okay, where does creativity come from? Have you ever had a loving thought while being angry? No. Have you ever had a creative thought, really brilliant idea, while being in fear or in anger? When was the last time that you had really creative, uh, fresh approach to some idea? Was it when you were somewhere here, you know, in fear, grief, anger, or maybe when you were under the shower, sunbathing, yeah, on a holiday? We all get creative when we are on holidays or when we spend time in nature, when we have, when we spend are at that moment at a higher level of consciousness. Creativity comes from higher levels of consciousness. Otherwise, you are just chewing what you already know. You have thoughts and memories and perceptions and actions according to lower states, if you are in a lower state. And you have all those from the higher part of the, our map, if you are in a higher state of consciousness. So, if you want to be really creative, you need to raise your level of consciousness. How? By choosing how to respond to circumstances. Choosing how to respond to circumstances. Don't do things all over again. Don't react. Choose to respond differently. And that's all, actually, that's all there is to it. Of course, we are going to talk a lot about later about how to do that. But this is a general idea. Circumstances are neutral. All circumstances are neutral basically neutral. How are you going to perceive, act, are you going to react or respond, and what thoughts are you going to have in your mind, and what memories are you going to store in which level. It's all about choice. And when you finally understand that your happiness is your choice. It doesn't have anything to do with outer circumstances. You are not a victim. And this is all about being a victim of the external circumstances. Why are you angry? Because someone made you angry. Why are you afraid? Because the world is frightening. Why are you ashamed? Because you think that Everyone will judge you and think badly of you because you are not worthy. Why are you? Because you are not. It's all about being a victim. About being like a leaf on a wind. And external circumstances are just blowing you left and right. And you have no say in that. But you do. By choosing how to respond to circumstances. And when you understand that, you come to this part of our map that is about empowerment. This is based on insecurity and this is based on self confidence or just confidence. You know, insecurity is, is to be expected if you believe that you are a victim of the outside circumstances. 
and I would be happy when world changes somehow <laughs> in my taste. <laughs> more to like, more to my taste. However, if you are really confident that that doesn't mean that uh, everything is going to be always fine and that everything will always go your way. But when it is not going your way, you choose to accept that circumstance with some understanding and optimism and forgiveness because now you will learn something new and that's that will somehow be good for you. And if you, re you know that if you remain in a higher vibrations, you will be happy regardless of the circumstances. Okay, so that's confidence. Knowing that whatever life throws your way, it will be fine. You can do it. You can solve it. You'll learn something from it. You'll be better. Okay? It is about uh, confidence and knowing that happiness is an inside job. Happiness is inside. Here, happiness is outside. I will be happy when I have more money. And I will be happy when... whatever. Those people who made me angry finally realize the truth. See the light and come here and apologize. Just accept their apology that you will never ever receive. <laughs> and that will propel you higher. And that's all you need. Choose to react differently to circumstances. Okay. This is about serving self. This is a selfish behavior. And this is about serving others. You know? And you may say, well, I don't see it that way. So all those levels are selfish. Well, yeah, sure, pride. It's a selfish, you know, pride is about I'm the best, I'm the greatest, you are all stupid, and so on and so on. But guilt and shame, you know, how come they are selfish? I mean, they are not selfish. Well, it, they are. Because, look, arrogance, pride, I'm the best, I'm the brightest, I'm talking about me, 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 me. But let's say now I'm in a level of guilt and shame. And I'm worthless. And nobody loves me. And there's nothing to be done here. And I'm guilty of this and I'm guilty of that. And so on. And who am I talking about? Me, 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 myself and I. I am not worthy. I am guilty. I am ashamed. Uh, I should have known better. I, 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 me, 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 me. This is all about being selfish. Self-centered, self-oriented, serving self, however I wish you call it. This is about others. This is about others. And actually, it starts, really starts with neutrality. Neutrality is a level balance point when, you know, you have your opinion, but it's not a tragedy if your opinion is not chosen as the official one. If someone else has a better idea, is right about it something. So, this is the point of neutrality, but from this point forward, you are actually, in a way, losing yourself. You are putting yourself in the, well, in the, in the way of helping others. Your life is about helping others because you know that will help you too, in a million ways that we will discuss just a little bit later. Also, this is about separation. This is about separation. This is about cutting yourself off of other people. I mean, nobody likes to hang out with people who are angry or arrogant or in deep apathy and grief and guilt and shame. They're heavy, you know. And just as we saw with our anger example, you know, somebody cuts you off on them. When you are angry, you know, people tend to stay away from you. So you are separating yourself from the others. And here it is integration. It is about pulling our resources together. And this is about cooperation. And this is about competition. Okay. So cooperation is more efficient. Because when you really know 
that what's good for you is good for me and what's good for everyone is also good for me <laughs> and what's good for me is good for you so you are improving yourself you're improving your vibration in order to help others okay and you know that you enjoy in in uh, victories of other people because you know you will benefit from them too and this is a lower mind this is a higher mind okay so these are more like reflexes and this is about using neocortex and evolution you know took pretty good job and worked hard to give us higher mind reasoning understanding forgiveness and compassion compassion is ultimate survival tool it integrates integrates it makes you understand other point of view okay so this is about force forcing yourself and this is about real power and force always create counter force and therefore it's limited real power doesn't create counter power <laughs> okay real power doesn't need justification real power good ideas don't need to be enforced you don't need to enforce good ideas. who forced you to connect your computer to the internet who forced you to buy a mobile phone no one actually it is just a good idea having a communicator in your pocket mobile phone for example it's a great idea no one had to force you to do that on the other hand well you will find a lot of examples especially in our society when you're forced to do something and that creates counterforce and it's just not efficient watch your thoughts for they become words watch your words for they become actions watch your actions for they become habits watch your habits for they become your character and watch your character for it becomes your destiny that quote is sometimes attributed to Gandhi, Lao Tse, Buddha, even Margaret Thatcher but we'll stick to Ralph Waldo Emerson and that is really a great quote because it shows you how your thoughts actually create your destiny, your life and we can even add a line zero at this and this is watch your vibration for it becomes your thoughts and how will you know what's your current vibration? Just take a look at your emotions or at your thoughts at any given moment. Since they are all reflective of each other, if you know what's your emotional state or if you closely examine the contents of your thoughts, you will know what's your vibration. And then, of course, your vibration will become your thoughts and your thoughts will become your words and words will become actions and it will become your destiny. Now, does that make any sense? It's quite okay if you're a little bit confused about this because this is not exactly what we've been told or at least what we've been led to believe in our society. I mean, on one hand, this somehow resonates true, but 